Hey, Dr. John here with The Kilted Chiropractor. Make sure you take the time to subscribe to our channel and like our videos. Okay, today we're with Ted. Ted's been with me for a few months. Yep. I know you came in. Tell me your story. So, I was, uh, I've always had lower back pain um, for the last few years and I've never been to a chiropractor. I was always scared. And what so were you scared about? I thought I was going to get my neck broken. Now, <laughs> really, I know that rarely ever probably has ever happened, <laughs> but in my mind that was what was going to happen. So. Yeah. Um, I had lower back pain that got progressively worse and then it would get better, go back and forth. Well, when I finally made the move to come in here, I had such bad back pain that I literally couldn't even stand up straight. And so I was like, well, at this point, a broken neck would be better than this, right? So <laughs> um, my boss already has been coming here for multiple years. Right. And so he's always had very good things to say. So I finally came in and uh, we were doing a couple times a week right out of the gate and then now we're up to three times or once every three, three weeks, weeks yeah. and and now it's kind of just more maintenance and mm -hmm. the how my feel is just a million times better yeah. now. we moved you and i remember when you came in you couldn't walk very well and bent over in pain and mm -hmm. now yeah we're gonna move into some i think today i want to teach you i do want to fine tune uh make some more corrections and then maybe do a little postural things and show you some things i know you spend some time sitting yeah so we want to address those issues today and just start incorporating postural things you can begin doing for yourself while you're at work that can make a difference in between visits as you strengthen and tone your body. But we're going to address with the audience something you said about a broken neck because that's a, that's actually, that's actually, <clears throat> there's been a big, the medical model, Though we've made great advances in medicine, there are some things out there that are just absolutely some of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard in my life. Break, broken necks and all kinds of stuff. And, the, and there are issues that have been commented that chiropractic can cause strokes, and we hear that a lot. Um, does it happen? The research says that it can and does every once in a while, but not near at the level that people are dropping dead. You know, when we talk to, when we look at malpractice, a, a person's malpractice rating is based on the, the chances that you're going to cause a problem with someone. You know, your incidents and how many people you see. So I can have several million dollars of in insurance that cost me fifteen to two thousand dollars a year. That's it, because the incident of exposure, in reality, what really happens is actually very small. It's not nobody dies. Right. You might get one or two, maybe. Okay, fine. How many, so my, my question is always this, how many people die from type 2 diabetes because of how it's managed by the medical model? And the American Heart Association, the Diabetic Association says about 600,000 people a year in the United States alone are dying from type 2 diabetes and all its downstream side effects because they manage it with drugs instead of factory fixing lifestyle. So I like to compare things in reality. Right. How many people die in auto accidents every year? just in the United States. So we get, chiropractic gets thrown like, oh my God, he caused all these problems. You get in your car, there's six million auto accidents here in the United States and roughly 32,000 people die every year in auto accidents. 30,000 die every year from flu. 600,000 die from type two diabetes. 100,000 people die from medical malpractice prescription errors and problems with the medical procedure itself that can be classified as maybe malpractice, maybe not. So we want to frame that in a reality that I know hundreds of doctors, hundreds of thousands of adjustments, no one's had a stroke, no one's died, no one's had a broken neck. You actually become like you. What do you say? You get better, you feel better, you have more energy, you sleep better, no pain. That's actually 99.9% .9 of everything we ever see in the clinic. But we keep hearing, every once in a while you get these really weird threads out there that really that stuff needs to go away because the drug therapy is dangerous. Nobody gets better on more drugs. Right. They get Spray better on the just masking problems. What helps people get better is learning how to eat well, to drink well, to move well, to sleep well, to think well, to talk well, to have a musculoskeletal system that's strong in a world where everybody's sitting against gravity and just slump, slump, uh, slumping at the end of the day, mm -hmm. but getting upright posture. And I can't think of a better thing to do in by adding chiropractic, do the neurological work, do the posture work, teach people how to eat well, move well, think well, talk well, sleep well, and have a body that you can play drug-free, disability-free, pain-free for, let's go for 100 years and have fun living. 
Right. Does that make sense? Someone like you is awesome too because it is all of it, right? You're not just here to fix someone's back. You you want to. Right. I don't want to just whole, crack backs all day. It's it's that whole wellness thing, and and that is big, I think. Because for me, I know part of it is that I was already well into this when I finally came in here, but I've lost 75 pounds since January. So what I was doing to myself previous to that is what got me here. You know what I mean? Sure. All of that extra weight and the way I was eating, and those were the big contributors that got my back in the position I was in. And so now that I've made those strides in conjunction with what you've done, right. now it's, I feel good. And 75 pounds is an immense amount of weight. It was a lot. And what early steps did you take to make those changes for yourself? So my biggest thing that I did to help myself was um, obviously exercise, but I did intermittent fasting mm -hmm. and that helped a lot. And I was always one of those people that I like to eat at the end of the night, which is the worst time you can eat. So <laughs> intermittent fasting helped with that. I don't eat after seven, then I don't eat until lunch the next day usually. Nice. And so though that was the big step in conjunction with exercise, obviously. And then to jumpstart the whole thing, I was pretty adamant about sticking to a very low calorie count. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm gotten pretty close to where I want to be, now I've opened that up quite a bit. And I, uh, I really don't even think about it anymore. You just I just made it a lifestyle change. Right. And I spend a lot of hours working every day with people, and that's some of the big things we talk about is, um, I know we've kind of deviated from our right. neck issues, but you know, you bring a valid point too, is that from a chiropractic point of view, you know, we, the, philo the philosophy of the industry has always been about lifestyle. I'm not going to get you to live to 100 just by, cr by adjusting your bones mm -hmm. and doing muscle work. That's just a structural component of your body, and you're right, you making the lifestyle changes that you made with intermittent fasting, uh, not eating until the next day at noon. Quite frequently I do on a regular basis here. Mm -hmm. I try not to snack in between. I have two. Sometimes I have three meals a day, but they're pretty nutrient dense. It means they're low carb. It means they're not breads. There's no pastas. Correct. I have hardly any fruit at all. I drink water. I have one vice. I love coffee. But, you know, we all have vices. Correct. Um, but those lifestyle changes, and, I'm 54. My weight right now is about 205 to 207. It fluctuates in there. During my martial arts years, 30 years ago, peak performance fighting, training, three different black belts, I'm the exact same weight at 205 to 207. Most guys our age are 40, 50 pounds heavier than when they were in their 20s. And that's, that's, that's where I was headed. Yeah, for sure. And lifestyle matters. And that there creates some longevity. Yeah. So to go back full circle with the things that we talk about, you know, chiropractic's strongest points are its wellness philosophy. Yes, there's some weird things we hear out there that just I don't think are grounded in anything reality other than, you know, one industry trying to scare another industry, you know, fear science, if you can call it science, but fear mongering, you know, don't go to chiropractic and die. Well, you know what? I don't know if anybody has died. Most of my patients live a long time. Do we fix everybody? No. And I think that's an important philosophy when you talk about is you, got, you can have people come in with problems. Neck pain, low back pain, numbness, tingling arms. All we can do, and I think chiropractic is the best at it, is conservative care. We're not trying to be somebody's hero. We're trying to be a guide to what's going on with the body. It's a bad idea to be the hero to everybody. It's a good idea to be a guide. Lifestyle changes, things that you've done in your body. Yeah. I can't do it for you, but I can show you the literature, show you how to do this and make changes. When we're dealing with somebody that's got a problem, whether you see this video and you have neck pain, low back pain, all I can do is be a guide and apply the knowledge. We can do a conservative treatment, do a care for a little while, and see if there's a change. Sometimes I can't fix somebody. I can't make a change that they can say I'm well. But sometimes they say, but overall, other things in their body feel a lot better. So they say as clients, they want to be here, they want the wellness model, mm -hmm. and we still refer them out, and I've got I mean, I can think of one right now that I've been working on that likes the work that we've done, feels better, but I can't resolve the neurological issues going into one of the nerve roots, so I've sent them out for referrals to a neurology specialist. Because I'm like, why is this not changing? So just keep those in mind that, you know, as you watch videos, understand in our mind, from a chiropractic point of view, it's just wellness care, being a guy, helping people get to where they want to go so you can live and play hard and have a life where you know your great grandkids when you're 100. Right. Will we get there? I don't know. But let's play.
trying. Make exactly. sense? Mm -hmm. So, let's get to work on you. We're going to do some soft tissue work. I'm going to get you adjusted, fine tuned. I want to teach you some exercises because I know you spend some time on that computer and we want to counteract that gravity from sitting. Ready to play? Yep. Right now, I just want to loosen up these muscles here. We're going to make sure that the lower back, there's two big muscle groups we like to look at here. You got the uh, quadratus lumborum that sits here, goes to the top of the pelvic crust, crest into the lumbar spine. You got long muscles up here, multifidus muscle, catches way up to the top and runs all the way down across the sacrum down in here. And these muscles are prone to getting tight. So we like to make sure there's no trigger points. And then we're going to check out the shoulder girdle up here because there's a lot of muscles in the back, like that one right there. <laughs> Feel that? Mm -hmm. A little crunchiness right in there. So the muscles up here that we can work on, we've got the later scapula that sits up in here, you've got the upper trapezius, you've got the supraspinatus, you've got the scapula here, you've got the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, you've got the teres ma uh, rhomboid major, rhomboid minor sits up in here, you've got some medial trapezius muscles that attach in here. A big strap of muscle here on the surface, which is your latissimus dorsi, catches up under here and runs all the way down. There's lots of things that create quite a bit of problems for people. So let's just see. Any tenderness here? What do you got here? Mm, a little bit, not much. Just a little. You've been taking care of yourself so well. It's awesome. Okay. I think I'm going to spend some time loosening with the sitting, and I know you've got some postural things because you spend a lot of time sitting. I think I'm going to focus most of my energy right here in this muscle group here. Today I'm going to do some postural taping up in here after we scrape, clean, and adjust. Then I want when to work with my patients. This is typically how we do. We spend a few months getting the knots and the adjustments uh, in control. And once a patient starts feeling better, then we start integrating postural exercises. A vast majority of my clients spend a lot of hours every day sitting, probably greater than six hours a day, many of them. And there's really cool techniques you can do to uh, help that. And we're going to show some of that today. After I get ten here, all these knots out of the shoulders. Because we see this a lot, this prolonged sitting. So let's start. Real quick, you know, I don't recall you getting headaches very often, right? Nope. No. Nope. Okay. Alright, so let's work on these. I'm going to scrape these here. Not bad. A little muscle cleared out pretty good there, pretty fast. There's one right there. So what are you looking for when you're, when you're scraping? Yeah, so when we scrape, first thing is, does the blade glide smoothly? Then the next thing we're looking at, and you'll see on the big muscles like the hamstrings, the quads, you'll slide and just catch and rigid, and so we work out the um, knots in there. If it's, if it's sliding pretty good on the surface, then I can go a little deeper and can palpate in there. I can feel gristle-like tightness in those muscles. So I want to, and I spend some time smoothing those out. We can get, there's another one right there. So I feel lumps and stuff in there. I just want to try to see if the body will give it up. Does it always give it up? No. Will it give it up frequently? Yes. Also, I like doing this work because uh, it warms the body up. You get the tissue warming up, you get the blood flow to the area, and uh, quite frequently I'll do a lot of dry massages on patients with the handheld units because a warm body is a lot easier to adjust than a cold body. So here we're just doing some wet work. Uh, switch hands for me. We're going to go to the other muscle over here. And I call it wet work in the sense that I use creams and I'm doing skin with my hands. 
the dry work I call it, dry massage is where I'm using the massage hand tools, massage guns they're calling them now, and we're just percussing the tissue and working muscles that way. Other doctors may use different names, I don't know. This side feels pretty decent. Are you feeling anything, Ted, to your attention that I'm coming across? Tissue? No, that side definitely feels better than the yeah. other one. This one has a little, we'll go back to that one in a minute. We do this work, it is about patient comfort making sure everybody's comfortable. You have to ask a lot of questions. Yeah, that's pretty smooth there. Okay, set that one down. I'm gonna go back here. Feels pretty, actually pretty decent. I like that. There's a little fiber right there. Probably a little upper trapezius or elevator scapula muscle or sits right in there. Well, she haven't been worked on in about three weeks, right? So mm -hmm. probably got something there. bigger muscles down here real quick just to make sure everything is happy then we're going to clean the skin once again here this is where I'm gonna do some gliding just making sure it's all smooth by going over the tissue you're getting blood flow to it kind of helps warm up the muscle a little bit Here, a lot of sitting, you see these muscle groups over here get all tight, so I'm gonna work on those. this right there. There we go. Do you feel a little hang up right in there? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm talking about. That little glide in there, I can feel it. Right there's one. There's a knot right there. Feel that? Oh wow. Yeah. So I'm gonna work that knot out. It's right in there. There it is, right there. Well you can't really see on the camera, but there's a big old knot right there. So we're just gonna just very gently just break it free, smooth it out. It'll make the adjustment a lot easier on him. There it goes. that feel different for you? Well, it definitely feels different when you go across it. Okay. It's not hitting you with pain or anything? Mm -mm. Good, all right. I'm gonna move up a little bit. There we go, that's sliding pretty good.
Alright, I'm gonna clean. Taping can be done almost to her imagination of things you want to do. So I kind of have, so what I'm going to do here is posture, because I know you sit a lot. Or 50% of your day roughly is spent sitting. Probably more than four hours a day, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that happens with long-term sitting is we start rounding our shoulders and rolling forward. And what I want to do is I want to use a tool, which I'm going to show in a few minutes, to bring the body more upright into a normal posture. So if you take the camera and come to the side, this is how most people are. Clear run. This is how they are by the end of the day. Mm -hmm. All curved forward and all this kind of stuff. There is some a balance disc I'm going to show you to use that we can bring the body up, bring the shoulders back, and this is actually a little bit better of a posture and how we should be sitting and not rounding. So what I want to do now is I'm going to tape for posture to just activate the muscles here, and then I'm going to activate some traps into here and some of the other muscles. Now I will change the variation of, ta of taping I do every few visits and change different things about posture taping because there's half a dozen different variations you can actually do. So in this particular world, I'm going to put this one down here and sometimes I'll tape what we call, there's a in posterior sling that I can tape. Some people have where I might tip across the body and pick up the muscles across this way. Sometimes we go straight across, sometimes I'll come under and pick up the lats. There's all kinds of different things we can do based on the presentation. And here, what is the uh, feeling the patient would receive if uh, well, they start moving out of good posture? The goal is to tape, to give them a sensory awareness by pulling a little bit and go, oh. So you pay attention to the tape, you start to slouch, you may feel this tape start to pull. And that's what we really want it to do, is we want it to be a sensory reminder and the other tools I'm going to use. And then I'm going to change this variation a little. Uh, yeah, that's what I was afraid of. This one's going to come off. Got to clean this again more. Yep. When it comes to taping, you know, I don't, if you tape conservatively, which I tend to be conservative taper and I don't charge a lot for it, um, I don't think, I really don't think you can do any harm. The least thing that can happen is have no effect at all. But I think as long as we're challenging the body in different ways, and of course I don't, like I've said in many of my talks, I don't want to be the hero here. I want to be looking at the guide, what can I do next, what can I help change for the patient, and what can the patient do on their own. So I'm big into um, care that the person can do in between visits at home that I teach the patients so that they're doing some form of postural activation exercises on their own. It has a tremendous healing effect on the body. Now. Make sure we're not slouching. I'm gonna pull over here. I'm gonna drop this one right here in the center. And what's gonna happen is if you start to buckle through the day, you might see you might feel this tape start to pull on you. It's gonna help you upright, put the long tape here, sensory, so your body feels it. And then we're gonna activate that with some exercises that you can do every day for five minutes or so. I'm gonna go up high this one. And I'll even change the location that I do some of this on the body. So now I'm gonna go a little stretch. We're gonna pick up scapula over here. I'm gonna pick up this over here. Like I said, this will be one of a few different variations I'll do over the course of the next few weeks of taping on a patient. Okay. Where you started now? Yeah, how long do I leave the tape on for? That is a good question. Um, so tape, I like to tape once a week or every 10 days or so out. So tape can actually stay on for about three days is what I, is what I want to get minimum. And then I like to go if the tape will stay, it just depends on how active and how much person sweats and stuff. If we can get it five full days, that's what I really want. 
Then I like to take it off, have you take it off, and then give the tape, give the skin two to three days of rest. Then we tape again in a different pattern and add more exercises for posture. So three to five days, five days is what I want to see with a few days of rest before taping. You can take showers with it, you can get it wet, you just don't scrub it. You know, because the ends will fray and come off. Here we go, we're gonna start correcting these. Does that, does that make sense to you? Yep, perfect. So let's clear out these here. How was that? Good. That moved nice. All right, now let's clear this lower back. So we're going to lay over here. Check real fast here. Let me have this arm here. Hold tight for me. I'm gonna push down. Got good power in that arm. Here we go. One, two, 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 three. So a lot of people ask me what I'm doing here. I'm doing muscle testing, hitting reflexes. If the arm goes weak, it'll show me kind of what area. So we've got uh -oh. L1. Hold tight. Here's L. No. Oh, just match my pressure. Here's L2. Not L2. See that one? Yeah. Felt that one. Here's L2. It's kind of blowing weak. Here's L3, kind of going strong. Okay. So I don't actually know where to adjust. I just says, hey, L2's got a problem. So what I want to do now is go back to the nerve root test and find it specifically on where it wants to go. Now I can do it this way. So here's L2, roughly. It stays strong on the right side and weak on the left mm -hmm. side. So I know it's probably on this side that needs to be worked on. So now we're going to go play with that for a second. So let's take this side, L1, L2 over here. I'm gonna have you hold here and I'm gonna pull your body back to center, okay? So hold tight. All right, he's not holding. I can move now. Let's go to the other side. Might be strong. Let your head rest. Hold tight from here. That's strong. Let's go back to this one one more time. Let's see. Hold tight for me. I'm pretty sure that's the one that I'm going to work on. Mm -hmm. I'm going to check a few other ones here. Hold tight for me here. That's pretty good. Internal rotation, hold right there. I'm going to pull this leg out. Hold tight. That's a little weird oh, yeah. too. So, something over here. I'm going to go back. And you're going to push right there for me with your hands. Both of them. I'm going to take this. Let the leg drop, take a deep breath, let the air all the way out, and push, let it relax, let it relax. Feel it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I heard it. Oh yeah. So we're going to go back, hold tight. Here I like to teach the patient, feel the change, mm -hmm. feel the power back. Let's go back to the nerve roots, see if they're talking to us. Hold tight. Stronger. Mm -hmm. Internal rotation. Stronger. Let's jump over here. Double check this one. Hold tight. Is that stronger? Mm -hmm. That's how you make a change. All right, now, those are good. Coming up for me, face tilt. Just a quick check on the neck real quick. Now, I always train that posture. Got the tape on there. Want to remind yourself to feel that. And then we're going to do some exercises. Hold that arm real quick there. Hold tight. Should be strong. It is. Strong. Let's do a tricep extension. Quick check on that one. Push up. Push up. Yeah, those are nice. Pinky thumb. I'm going to go <laughs> just like that. I'm going to peel these muscles just to make sure those lower nerves are... This is inherently a weak test anyway, <laughs> but I should. They shouldn't flop. Right. Okay. So now, you're sitting. You're working on the computer. A couple hours in. What can we do? to put ourselves in good posture. So one of my favorite tools 
that I start patients with, we can do a lot of different exercises with, is a balance disc. Ah, minus me throwing it at you. So we do the balance disc. So how do we use this? Rule number one, we can use it in a chair. If you sit in a rolling chair, we have to lock the wheels. So what we do is you see how a person sits, and it's going to work better, and we're going to really exaggerate. So I'm going to have you stand up. You would take this and put it in your chair. I'm going to sit and I'm going to do this for me. I would put this in a chair. I'll sit down here. I sit on it so that little bits exposed and I roll my pelvis forward. Legs are at 45 degrees. Now I'm sitting in an upright position where I can't slouch. You have to force yourself to slouch and roll the pelvis. This is an anterior pelvic tilt. So I want you to sit here. This is a little inflated, probably a little lighter. So sit on that one. Take your thighs at 45, your feet at 45, and let your stomach roll forward. And feel what happens to your body. Now, to sit there and go to work for four hours like this, your brain would like, okay, I'm done. But what we can do is you can start using a $20 tool, you can get them off Amazon, um, and you can start slowly training your posture back of upright sitting. You know, maybe 10 minutes every hour, or five minutes every hour, whatever you're comfortable with, and you start changing and getting that curve back in that and good upright posture. Can you feel the difference? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now let's talk about two simple exercises we can do. Okay. Let's cut this piece out, but mention that we will have a link to that product in the description. All right. You want me to say that now? Yep. Okay. And for the viewers out there, we'll put a link um, to Amazon for this product. There's dozens of them, manufacturers out there. They're called Balance Disc. We'll, have, we'll put it on there for you. But it's a simple tool. The key to remember this is if you sit on this, you know, I have one for the chairs here when I sometimes use them. I have them at home, I have them at the computer desk. Um, you have to get used to this. You just can't plop and start working. Some of your brain just, it's different. So now we're gonna go into some exercises. Whenever I'm working with a patient and we're training, I like to use inexpensive products because, uh, you know, why spend a lot of money on stuff you're not gonna use? Inexpensive things. Tools done correctly, they're not expensive, they last a long time. Uh, I'm hoping that you'll do the exercises that we teach. Um, so let's get started on this one. I like TheraBands or any brand company that makes them. I like the black bands for guys, a little stronger. So there's two exercises I'm going to teach you today. And every time a person comes in, um, within visits I'll start teaching. You're at the point now where I'm going to start teaching a little bit every time you come in. So first exercise I like to do but you know, every, you know what, let's restart the part about the bands. Okay. Um, like and when you have a product, always say, do, don't say there's a million of them out there. Oh, okay. Just say, I recommend this one that I use in my clinic. And we'll also have descriptions. Thera, of Thera 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 Band. Yeah. Thera Band, I think that's the company. Yep. This is resistant exercise bands. So and just say, just say bands. The one we recommend, we'll have a, we'll have a okay, description yeah. below. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to teach you two exercises we're going to use exercise bands for. And for the viewers, we'll have a link to the companies that we would use um, in the clinic so you can get your own. First exercise, I usually recommend five minutes. It should only take you a couple minutes to do these. Three or four times a day, it's very simple. First exercise is your elbows go in tight, bands about waist level, probably like that. You're pinning the elbows in, and we're very gently opening this way. You and then, hold? Yep, and you bring it in slowly. So I like to go about three to five reps. You go one, hold it, and bring it in slowly. And then two. So what you're doing is we're activating these posterior shoulder muscles back in here. And then that's probably all I'm going to do. And then I'm going to switch to my next exercise. And you also want to make sure that you're not pulling. Right. We don't want to pull out. <laughs> we want external rotation like that. And that activates this here. Now the next one we're going to do, very simple. This goes behind your back, across the top of your shoulders like this. Just like that. Yeah. And then you can increase or decrease resistance by how far you go out of it. Yeah. Yep. And then I'm going to put it right there. And what I like to do is shoulders back, I mean, excuse me, arms on top, and bring it back. You want to feel those muscles in the shoulder blade area 
open and close, and you can feel it. And then I rotate my hand on top, and then I go back, and then my left hand will be on top, and just keep rotating the hands back and forth for about 10 reps or so, okay? And what we're doing is we're activating these muscles back here, and you're gonna want to squeeze, yep, and bring it all the way back, as far as we go, you wanna feel those muscles, feel that? Yep, and then do it again. Good, and then bring it back. I'm gonna concentrate on feeling those muscle groups right in there. And that's two of the main exercises of about a half a dozen or more I'm gonna teach. <laughs> so, this band is yours. You can keep that band. Just try to take a posture break every, it's nice to do it every hour, most people can't. Um, but if you can get it three or four times during a day in, it should take you, how long do you think it would take? A minute and a half, two minutes? How long? That's it. It's really, all you're trying to do is wake up the posture from too long of sitting. The longer we sit, the worse you know, neurology it gets and we start to slump. And then adding the balance that's here is a way to get the posture, start training against gravity so it becomes a natural way of doing things. Make sense? Very much. Okay. Now, anything else? Did I miss anything? I don't think so. And my favorite thing to say is, Time to play. So go play.